These are excellent. Let me repeat it. Excellent presentations. Proper presentation for scattered crappie. And if you want to catch big crappie, hey, that right there. Whoa. Doggone it. I am talking about. Whoa! Golly, what a crappie. Oh, my. That's the way you break the ice right here. This is a good one. I want y'all to look right here. That ain't no little bitty one. That is not a little bitty crappie. I guarantee you it ain't. That's a good one to put in the bucket. Y'all know why? Well, it's because... Golly, what a crappie. That to give us some big old flays right there. Woo-wee! What a fish. Look how he eat that. That's a big fish right there. That's probably about, that fish is pushing 15 inches. But I'm going to fillet him. We're going to have a fish fry at the church. Right there is where he belongs. This is a Shad Fry Z Blue Glimmer Sparkle. Uh, 1.75, inch and three quarter long. It's a, these baits right here, these micro finesse Z-mans, are no doubt the best combination for me. Now I'm just talking about me with this Roadrunner. This is a sixteenth of an ounce Roadrunner. But it's really a one thirty second of an ounce. And the reason why I chose that color is because the water is clearing up. And and another reason why is because the water is warming up. There's a few fish up here shallower. Not many. But what's coming up here is going to be good ones, folks. I guarantee you. Those are them big old crappie coming up here to looking for a place to spawn. And there was another bike that was a bluegill. And the reason why I'm selecting an underspin once again is because it's cloudy conditions. It's cloudy today. And so I'm wanting a little more commotion because of that. But yet I'm wanting that natural looking Z-Man bait on, on that underspin because there's a lot of shad in the area. And the water's clear, so that's going to be a natural looking presentation. There he is. That's another good crappie right here, folks. Another good crappie. Doggone. I can't tell y'all how this fish is pulling. My, 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 my. Look here now. Yeah, I'm going to net him. Look how black that crappie is. Oh, my goodness. What a fish. What a fish. Now that fish didn't inhale it. That's a big crappie, but I don't think he's as big. I don't think he's as big as this other one. We'll look and see. Tell you what. Quit. We're going to catch crappie. I'm going to let that bass go, folks. Go on back. Okay, let's see. Uh, I just felt a little bit. I mean, I, let's catch crappie. Look at there. What a couple fish. This one's bigger right here. That fish is probably more than 15 inches. Let's put them. Look at there. Huge crappie. See what I'm saying? What I'm saying is those bigger fish come up first. Them fish ain't very deep at all. They're not over about two feet under the surface. Two to three feet but they're going to be scattered. So this is a great bait for covering water. 
make a long cast right there. I'm going to keep it below the surface anywhere from 16 inches to 2 feet. That should be good enough. As clear as the water is, those crappie have come up 2 or 3 feet to hit this bait. I modify these 1 16th of an ounce baits to where they're 1 32nd of an ounce. So that's a size 4 hook that's in this bait right here, folks. But to reel this bait slower because of the shallow water I'm going to fish, I purposely cut off half of the weight right here, okay, with some side cutters to make it lighter. I want it lighter so I can reel it slower. Now, they make a 1 32nd ounce, but I like the size 4 hook on the 1 16th of an ounce, a little bit bigger hook. So I can use these Z-Man baits. I tell you, I've been catching the fire out of crappie all fall, all winter. And here it is almost springtime with this combination. There he is. Yep. Come on back here, boy. Good crappie. I tell you what, I'm on a good pattern right here. Big fish pattern right here. Oh my goodness, what a crappie. I can't tell y'all, once again, I cannot tell y'all how hard this one right here is pulling. Let's put him in the net. Golly, that might be bigger than, no, I don't know, 15 and a half inches. Probably. I don't know. But look how he eat that. I'm telling y'all, that's the world's best crappie bait that I know of for big crappie. And that's going to be an underspin. Let's put that big slab in there. Now those are slabs. I'm going to take that little old bluegill. He looks funny in there with them crappie. Going back. We'll have crappie for the congregation. That's exactly right. All right, woo. I'm talking about woo. I've got me a good pattern going right here. I'm understanding this a little bit more, a little bit more. Let's look and see how realistic this bait looks in the water. Well, let me try it again. Okay. Y'all see that? That ain't nothing but hope you can see it. That ain't nothing but realistic. This is where you need a bait that covers a lot of water because even though I've got a little pattern going, I know how deep they are. But as far as definite cover, they could be on rock, they could be on wood. Rock and wood is what I'm saying. They could be on, a, uh, you could catch a big one on a point. There's no telling, folks. Not right now. They can be anywhere. So that's why you need a bait. An underspin is one of those baits that you can really cover a lot of water effectively because of that little spinner on the bottom. Run it through there a couple times. If you don't get bit, well, cast again. Cover that water. Kind of like fishing for bass with a spinner bait or a chatter bait, don't be afraid to cover that water. And it makes it fun. I just got bit right there. That's a little bass. See, I'm catching a lot of fish that y'all ain't seeing. Because I'm targeting crappie. That's a little spotty bass, I believe. Yeah. That's a, my highlights to kill a poop out of eye. So we're going to unhook him and let him go. But this is a catch-all bait, jam-up crappie mm, bait. Bluegill, I mean anything, anything you hit it, bass, you name it. Catfish, there's one. That's another bass. That's a little large jowl. Large jaw and spot come from the same area. 
He's cute, ain't he? Come on back. But I always reel these baits just, just uh, at the right speed. Just enough for those blades to turn. That's what I'm trying to say. But after the initial cast, I'll let it sink down to the level where the fish are. And, uh, oh, I got a, today, <laughs> or this evening, it's two feet, two to three feet. Sometimes it's four to six feet. Sometimes it's 12 inches. You know, you just have to figure out that. Boy, that was a good bite. Oh, okay. There he is. I caught this one. Well, I ain't caught him yet. But, uh, I'm excited. On a new bait. That's a big old crappie. God, I've caught some good ones. Monsters today. Really not today. In the last couple hours, see, it's raining right now, folks. But this is on a new bait. I'm going to show it to you. Go ahead and land this big son of a gun. Oh, big black crappie. I hadn't caught a white crappie. Look at that. Look at there. My goodness. Whew. Now, is the congregation, the congregation is going to be proud of me. Look at there. Let's put that. Look at there. Got some old big fish right there. They. Okay, this is a new bait, and I wanted to, I didn't want to try it out here. I wanted to go to the Coosa River and try it out. This is a peelhead underspin. Uh, it's a Bass Pro Shop version. Has a sickle hook right here. It's one sixteenth of an ounce, but it's not. It's a one thirty second because I've cut the lead off of the hook and wrapped dental floss. Just like I've shown many times, and it's got a bigger hook. That's probably a size, um, size two hook. And I'm using a crappie magnet. And instead of a uh, Colorado blade, it has a little willow, willow leaf blade. But I wanted to try that. Voila, we caught a big crappie. These fish, like I said, are just now pulling up. Very, very scattered. And the water temperature is 61 degrees. Now, when I really believe there's a crappie in a place, that's what I do. I make multiple casts, which I've mentioned before. And a lot of times, you'll be right. You're premonition to be right. And uh, you'll go ahead and catch that big crappie. Now, here we're coming up on a point. And points are great this time of year. These big fish will talking about crappie will move up on these points oftentimes in other words i work the <laughs> anything that looks like there's a fish there i'll work it and also when you come to a point like this i like to parallel it you know i know the fish are anywhere between uh four to six feet of water i know that that's my little pattern I've got right here. So I'll make a cast in that depth zone right, right through here is four to six feet of water. And I'm letting it fall anywhere from two to three feet. And then let's see what we got. That ain't no crappie. Golly. It's a big bluegill though. Look at there, what a big bluegill. Let's let him go. There he is. Boy, boy, boy. Another mule, folks. Now that crappie hit it real aggressive. That was a, the most aggressive strike I've had in a while. That water's warming up, and these fish are really knocking the fire out of it. This is another big fish. When I say big one, I mean big one. Come here. 
these are monster crappie, and I'm going to say it again. Golly, boom. That's what I've been talking about. The big fish will move up first. Remember, they have to cut right that in the book of crappie. A lot of times, these fish are not focused on until it's too late. Look at there. My goodness, what a big old Bessie right there. Look, look at there. They, let's put him in the bucket. Golly. I tell you what, it's hard to quit. But I'm fixing to have to because we ain't got long. I've got a leader right here about six foot long. Sit this is a six pound test slower carbon line, and that's a a, a triline knot, which is a strong knot. And that is eight pound test braid, and of course a Fago 2500 size reel. It's just a dial with reel. This is a sow belly rod, six and a half foot long, light action. Light is a doggone feather, can't even feel it. That's the kind of rod that I like when I'm really fishing hard, covering a lot of water, making a lot of cast. Very, very important, folks. There he is. Another one. Mule, folks. Yeah. It's been, it's been a while since I've caught this many big crappie. Now this one here is huge. He don't want to quit. This is, when you start catching them this big, you're catching a different kind of fish. Now I'll show you what I'm talking about. Y'all seeing that? Oh, he just barely hooked. We're going to have to be careful. We're going to lose him. Oh my goodness. This one, this fish right here is probably two and three quarter pounds. I'm going to show this one to you. Well, I'm going to show this one to you and uh, he might be two and a half. I don't know. Let's say two and a half. I wish I had my, my scales with me, but uh, my goodness, folks. My, my, my. I'm going to get the, the next biggest one right here and hold them up. This is some huge crappie. And then I'm going to lay them all out right here. Now, I've caught these fish in about two and a half hours. I did not think I was going to catch a load of crappie like that right there. Not today. I'm going to get the two biggest ones. Of course, there, there's several of them that's carbon copies of each other so it's going to be hard to but i'm going to get a couple of the biggest ones and hold them up and uh i caught these fish you know about two and a half hours it's a type of pattern that i i developed this pattern by a hunch just from years of experience being out here on the water I knew that a few had to be moving in and um, I've done this before but it's been a while that I've caught this many big crappie at one time if you can hit it just right you'll catch huge fish I'm surprised we didn't catch a big white crappie but um, these right here are newbie sized crappie fish right here okay so uh, I'm going <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple of the biggest ones. There's a couple of the biggest ones right there. Thick. See how thick they are across the back? But the, but the thing of it is, this is the biggest one right here. The last one that I caught. Uh, there's a, a lot of them like that. Right there. Just two pounders. <laughs> that one's over two pounds. Got to be. But um, anyhow... Hey, man, <laughs> fishing is a sport. It's second to none.
when I've seen you, your beautiful smile. I know that I love you from the moment that I've seen into your eyes. Oh, baby, woo-wee, I love you. Yes, I do. Beat that. There ain't many people can romanticize like me. You know, folks, I get a lot of questions, and a lot of people say, here comes the rain, doggone it. It's going to be a good one. It's going to rain like... Anyway, a lot of questions. And, it, and one of them is, when are you going to get a life scope? When are you going to jump on the bandwagon? Well, I have... When I started off fishing, I started off with a flasher, a Tom Mann's flasher unit. And as the years went by, it graduated to a little better, liquid crystal grass, a little better, a little better, up into um, live scope. Now, I really, through the years, have used instinct and uh, what, you, what you call experience, you know, in locating fish out here. Um, on any, I don't care where I'm at, I can find them. I have my own ways to find fish, and it's through years of experience. One day I may get a live scope, but right now it would be hard for me to do that because I fish on instinct. I find bass the same way that I find crappie. They're game fish, they're predators, and I hunt them as that. The main thing, like I said, is to focus on forage. Where's the shad? I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments, everything y'all do for this doggone channel. Hey. No, that's a new net. That was given to me. Nope. Hey. Whoa. Whoa. And remember, go fishing when you can. Fuck all this good